their recording is started good morning i welcome you all for another session of cryptography network security and uh, cyber law so today we will uh, continue our uh, module 3 uh, on key management authentication ip security and security at transport layer now in today's session which is session 4 will uh, be discussing about uh, authentication techniques now let's see uh, let's look at what is the agenda of today's uh, uh, talk now today we will start a discussion on what we mean by authentication which we had uh, introduced briefly in the previous session and then we will see what we mean by one way authentication and we'll see the classification of one way authentication wherein we have uh, two types one is the password based authentication and the other one is certificate based authentication and then moving further we have another uh, uh, way of authenticating uh, two uh, entities uh, that we call as mutual authentication now in case of mutual authentication we have four topics to be discussed out of which for this session we have uh, restricted ourselves to just two uh, first two topics that is the shared secret based authentication and the symmetric key based authentication now the authentication and key agreement and use of time stamps which are uh, which are a part of mutual authentication we'll be discussing in the next uh, session now let's start with what we mean by authentication fine now before uh, we proceed further we'll see that at the end of the session Uh, you will be able to describe one of the uh, uh, one way authentication techniques which is a password based or a certificate based authentication technique and also uh, you will be able to explain uh, mutual authentication uh, using a shared secret key that is a symmetric uh, uh, key cryptography or uh, you will be also able to explain um, uh, mutual authentication which is based on asymmetric key cryptography now before uh, uh, before uh, starting or going ahead with password based authentication uh, let me first introduce you to uh, or recall what we mean by authentication and also we will try to understand uh, the entities that are involved in this authentication process and then move ahead with the password based authentication let me get rid of this okay now authentication is defined as the process in which the receiver uh, is able to prove the uh, get the proof that or he is able to verify that the message is come from a genuine source now let's say this uh, the source and the re uh, receiver are communicating with each other the receiver is able to uh, get the information or is able to verify that the information or the message that is received from the source is a authentic source as it claims to be now the source is also called as principal who is trying to prove his credibility whereas uh, the verifier who is the receiver over here who is trying to uh, get uh, the principal verified or to whom the principal is able to is trying to prove his identity we call it as verifier now the principal the source is the principal and the destination or the receiver is the verifier over here now what is authentication it is a process in which the principal is trying to prove that it is the entity it claims to be and to to whom is this principal uh, trying to prove it is trying to prove to the verifier now auth authentication are possible in many ways one is uh, one in computer system what we use is a password in order to prove ourselves that we uh, we are exactly whom we are claiming to be we provide a login along with the password detail and also uh, you, we can use a, pa a passphrase in order to get uh, authenticated to a particular system or a server now if you are trying to physically prove that you are the person whom you are cla claiming to be in that case what do we use we use an id card it could be an a passport or it could be a aadhar card or whatever now over here let's uh, let's try to understand that there are uh, that there is there are two uh, types of authentication now the first type is one way authentication now what is this one way authentication 
one way authentication let's assume that there is a client server communication now this what 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 happens uh, in this client server communication obviously the client is the person who tries to prove himself to the server prove uh, his credibility or authenticate himself to the server now what does the server do the server if it is able to verify whatever client uh, login and password is provided to it if it is able to verify it it will um, say that the client is authenticated now over here the client is authenticating itself to the server now the server is not authenticating back to the client saying that okay are you that i am the person who is going to take your request and uh, satisfy your request now only the client is trying to prove to the server its identity with the help of a password now this process wherein only one person is trying to prove himself to the other entity we call it as one way authentication now what do we mean by mutual authentication uh, mutual authentication is counterpart of one way authentication now what happens let's take the same scenario where client and server are existing server uh, client is trying to prove himself to the server now this is one communication that has occurred and server is able to verify the authenticity of the client fine now what is the other thing that will happen in this case the server will also prove its credentials to the client now client is able to uh, get to know the fact that it is actually communicating to a genuine server not to a uh, compromised server or not to a um, uh, intruder or something like that okay now mutual authentication is wherein both the communicating parties be it the client or the server or be it two hosts both of them prove their credentials to each other in one way authentication only one communicating party will prove itself to the other communicating party or Uh, that's it now over here let's see uh, what are the various types of one way authentication now over here we'll be discussing two types of one way authentication one is the password based authentication and the other one is certificate based authentication now let's go ahead with discussing what we mean by password based authentication now password based authentication has uh, has been the most common mechanism to implement any authentication technique now we all know that in order to log in into our system our own computer we would have set a password and once we provide the password the system is able to prove that okay you are a genuine person who is trying to access the system or it could be even in the case of a, uh, of your gmail account or it could be even in case of your mobile uh, device whatever everywhere we are able to provide a password and try to gain access to the system now this is a very common method to implement authentication now what exactly is happening here now to log in into a server let's take the example of a client server communication to log in into a server what does the user do he has to authenticate himself to the server now to authenticate himself to the server the client enters his login name along with the password now the password is uh, some sort of secret uh, uh, information that is known only to the client and the server now the password which is provided by the server helps the client prove itself now the login name what does it do the login name identifies the user and the password over here helps the user to prove itself to the server along with the login name now this is all about password based authentication we have a client and a server now cl uh, client is providing his credentials and getting authenticated to the server now let's look at this example over here uh, the client is alka she has provided a login name alka and the password is whatever these uh, set of characters now what does what happens over here now we have uh, this database which is having a file uh, now this file at the server s, s represents the server which is, and this is the database present at the server 
Now over here in this uh, database, we have a set of login names along with uh, its password. Now when a client sends its credentials to the server, the server receives it and uh, verifies and maps it across with this particular uh, file and checks if it is uh, having an entry for Alka along with the having an entry for Alka, it will also verify whether the password provided by Alka or the client actually belongs to Alka. If it matches, then server is uh, server gives uh, a client an opportunity to communicate and server will um, take the request from the client. Now, what are the drawbacks associated with this password based authentication technique? The first drawback is the passwords over here in this file uh, which is stored on the server. We can see that they are all in clear. Whatever is the password provided by Alka, it is also present over here. They, they, are, they are matched and then checked for the authenticity. Now, all these passwords are seen to be stored in clear. Now, any person when you, when you send, when Alka is sending a password can see that particular password. An intruder can see that particular password by uh, gaining access to that uh, message. Now, eavesdropping is easily possible. Now, the second thing is passwords are stored in the uh, database in an unencrypted form. Now, attackers can compromise the entire file of password. Now, when you look at this, there are two, uh, two places uh, or loopholes in this particular system, password based authentication. One is during transmission, an intruder can intrude and get the access to the password. And second is wherein, uh, the, uh, wherein the attacker is trying to gain this entire file of passwords which is stored on the server. Now, we do not want that to happen. What do we do? Now, we make a slight modification in order to tackle such an issue. Now, what is that? Over here, we can see that there is a, a property of hashing that is used in order to hide the password or convert the passwords into something else and, be, and uh, store it in that particular uh, database which is present on the server. Now, why do we convert this? See, over here, the client is again communicating with the server uh, for gaining access to the server. Now, what is the client pro providing? The login name that is Alka along with that, it is not just providing the password, it is providing the hash of the password over here. Now, this hash of the password is sent to the server along with the login name and Alka and its hash of password are verified. Now, this helps us to prevent, uh, helps uh, an attacker from deducing the user passwords from um, uh, both the cases. You can even uh, try to hide the information during transmission or you can make uh, this information unintelligible even in the password file. Now, both the ways we are able to tackle this particular uh, disadvantage of the previous session, uh, previous uh, password based authentication. Now, we know that uh, hash has one way property and, uh, and we also know how hashes are verified. Now, moving further, uh, we will see, uh, we will continue our discussion on password based authentication. Now, let us look at what we mean by replay attack and the next attack will be, uh, next uh, protocol that we discuss is the challenge response protocol. Now, what is a replay attack? It is an attack that is possible over the previous uh, improvision of password based authentication wherein we were using hash of a password. Now, what is, uh, what is exactly happening here is that the attacker can snoop the communications that are happening between the client and the server. The client over here is Alka and the server uh, is represented as S. Now, what, what do we mean by snoop? Snoop is nothing but eavesdropping, just listening to what is the communication occurring between Alka and the server. Now, what does the attacker do? He tries to obtain the hash of the password that is being transmitted. And then, what, uh, and then he can use that particular uh, message to replay it back to the server after some X amount of time and trying to pretend as if it is uh, the, uh, as if it is Alka. That is, it tries to impersonate Alka. Now, this sort of an attack in which one, pl uh, one plays back all a part of one or more previous messages with an intent of uh, impersonating a legitimate user is referred to as a replay attack. 
So, over here in this particular case, what is the, the attacker trying to do? He is trying to impersonate Alka and trying to gain access to the uh, server. And how is he able to do it? He is trying to listen to the messages that are exchanged between Alka and the server and he will make a copy of those messages. After some 2 to 3 hours of time, he will pretend to be Alka and send those messages to uh, the server. The server will think that these messages are coming from Alka and try and give the access because it is uh, giving uh, the right uh, hash of a password. Now moving further, we will see an improvision over this password based authentication. Now that many of us, many of us are aware of uh, the bank transaction. What do we do if we are uh, performing an internet banking? In, uh, first, we log in ourselves by providing the password and if uh, we are uh, interested to communicate further or perform a transaction, we need, we get something called as OTPs. The same concept we are trying to explain over here. Now, why do we use an OTP in order to prove that we are fresh, uh, there is some sort of fresh challenge that is happening here. Now, in case of uh, uh, an improvision over this password based authentication, which is called as challenge response protocol. Now, this uh, challenge resp uh, response protocol is used in order to thwart a replay attack. That is, the uh, attacker should not be able to use the uh, uh, messages that it has snooped on and later use it for gaining access uh, to the server. Now, now the server whenever it wants to uh, communicate with the uh, client, uh, when a client wants to communicate with the server, it offers with a fresh challenge to the client. Now, what does uh, the client do? We, uh, in response to this particular fresh challenge, the client does not send its password directly. But what it does is it tries to prove that it knows the password. Now, how does it prove that it knows the password? Now, the server once it is uh, able to get uh, give back the uh, give back a reply to the challenge or response to the challenge which is posed by the server the server is able to uh, uh, know the fact that uh, this client which is trying to gain access is genuine it is able to verify now such a strategy we call it as challenge response protocol Now let's look at this three way, uh, three message one way authentication uh, which is uh, used over here. Now over here there are two communicating parties A and B which are trying to communicate. Here the first, in the first message A is trying to communicate its identity. Now what does the second message do? It is coming from B. Let's assume it is the server, A is the client. Now, B will send a challenge to A. That means a server is sending a challenge to A. This challenge is what? It is a random number which is selected by the server and it is sent back to the client. Now, this random number selected by the server is also known as nonce. Nonce is a number that is used only once. Now, what is the next thing that happens? the client has to respond back to the server. Now, how does the client respond back to the server? Now, it will take that nonce which is sent by the server along with the password. It applies a function f over it and then sends it to the uh, server. Now, this is a three message one way authentication technique. Now, let's see what we mean by the function f. In the function f, there are uh, uh, a few properties associated with it. Now, given x and y, it is easy to compute f of x and y. Over here, x is what? Password and y is the nonce. Now, this f of, uh, f of x and y is a one-way function. So, knowing f of uh, this x, y, it should be infeasible for uh, others to compute the password. Now, given a nonce r, it should be infeasible to compute f of password along with the nonce, even if one of them knows uh, uh, 
these uh, f of uh, nonce 1, nonce 1, nonce 2 and nonce 3 and so on for the corresponding nonces. Now let us see how we can improvise this particular uh, three message one way authentication we, uh, we discussed. Now the function over here uh, in the third, uh, case, uh, third uh, message that was transmitted from the client to the server for this instead of f we are using a hash function, cryptographic hash function. Now this cryptographic hash function is applied over a concatenation which is represented by two parallel lines concatenation of the password along with the nonce r. This nonce r is sent by b to a in second message. Now there is a third way of dealing with this particular one way authentication that is with the use of a secret key uh, and performing the encryption. Now over here the previous messages remain the same. A is trying to communicate, uh, com communicate or authenticate itself to B. So for that it is sending its ID and B is responding with the nonce. And what is happening here in the third case is the nonce is encrypted using the secret key that is shared between A and B. Now what is the secret key? It is nothing but the password that is shared between A and B. Now let us see uh, another way of uh, performing this one way authentication. Uh, over here we can see there is a change in the messages that are being exchanged. A is trying to authenticate itself to B. Now A has sent its identity to B. Now what is B doing? B is not directly selecting a random number and send a random number which is called as nonce and sending it to uh, A. But instead it is encrypting it with the password which is present with itself. The password is something that is shared between A and B and it is sent to A. Now what will A do? A will decrypt this password and then obtain that particular uh, R value that is the nonce value and send it back to uh, server. Upon, uh, upon receiving the server will check whether this R b actually belong, actually is the one that it, it sent. Now if both of them match and, uh, and um, access is provided and uh, uh, B can say that A is authenticated to itself. Now there are a lot of properties that nonce uh, uh, numbers have. One of the first property that nonce has is uh, it is random in nature. Now second thing is it is non-recurring uh, value and every time we select a new nonce that is why uh, we are able to avoid the replay attack. Nonce itself refers to the fact that it is a number that is used only once. And then nonce value is as large as 256 bits and this provides a huge, spa uh, huge space or a large space of numbers. Now usually the sender and the receiver never keep track of the nonces that are used for uh, validate, validations. Now since uh, uh, the la there is a large space uh, uh, from which nonce can be selected because the size of a nonce is 256, the prob probability that this particular, uh, that the same nonce uh, be used twice is infinitely, uh, infinitesimally small there is very less probability that two nonces will have same value. Now let us uh, check out with what happens in certificate based authentication. In case of certificate based authentication, uh, we have seen that uh, uh, the client will be using a public key certificate. Now there are again two ways of performing certificate based authentication. Let us check the first way of uh, performing the certificate authentication. Now over here the scenario remains the same wherein A is trying to authenticate itself to B. Now A sends her certificate to B. Now what does B do? B selects again a nonce value and sends it back to A as a challenge that B ha that A has to take up and resolve and send back to B. Now what does A do? 
Now once the certificate is sent before sending a nonce B has to validate this particular certificate that is sent by A. It performs certain checks over it. One is that it checks the validity uh, period of this particular certificate it received along with the name of the person for which the certificate is issued. And also B will verify the signature of the certificate authority on the certificate. It checks whether the certificate is actually genuine or not. Moving further, now what happens in case uh, once the nonce is received after all these validations uh, uh, positive and then uh, B is sending a nonce to A. Now there is a reply that has to be sent by A back to B. Now what does this reply contain? R is a nonce that is received from B in message 2. Now this nonce is encrypted by a using its own private key. Now what should B do on receiving this particular message? Obviously B has to decrypt this information uh, using uh, A's public key and compare this nonce with the actual one that it has sent. If both of them match then we say that uh, B, uh, A is able to authenticate itself to B. Now. Let us look at the second way of uh, certificate based authentication. Now over here A is sending a message to B asking B to um, authenticate itself, uh, authenticate and provide access to B. Now this certificate sent by A on receiving obviously a check is performed in, uh, as that of the previous case, it checks for the validity and identity of A. Then what does it do? B will select a nonce and then encrypt it using the public key of A and send it to A. Once this message is received, A will decrypt the challenge, retrieve the nonce and send that nonce R back to B. Now if this nonce is same as that, the, as that of the nonce sent by B, then B is able to verify the authenticity of A that is authentication succeeds. Now this marks the end of one way authentication wherein we have discussed two types uh, of uh, one way authentication techniques. One is the password based authentication which had uh, four flavors of it and also we had uh, certificate based authentication with two flavors. Now moving further, we will see what we mean by mutual authentication and within mutual authentication we will be discussing uh, two types, one is the shared secret uh, based authentication and another one is asymmetric key based authentication. Now what do we mean by mutual authentication? We have seen that it is often uh, require, uh, required that both the communicating parties authenticate with uh, each other. Now in case of an internet banking, the customer authenticates itself to the bank and also the bank is able to prove that the customer is actually communicating with a, uh, a genuine uh, bank. Now, now this sort of communication wherein both uh, the customer and the bank are able to prove their credentials to each other, we call it as mutual authentication. Now within mutual authentication, uh, as we have already told, we will just discuss two topics for today that is uh, shared secret uh, based authentication and the other one is asymmetric key based authentication. Now let us look at what happens in shared uh, secret based authentication. Now again there are two entities who are trying to prove uh, their uh, um, uh, genuinity to each other. A is trying that it is genuine to B and B is trying to prove uh, that it is genuine and it is trying to prove it to A. Now let us see how this message, uh, how this communication goes further. Now in the message 1, A sends its identity along with the nonce RA. Now since this nonce is generated by uh, A, we refer to it as a nonce generated by A. RA represents a nonce generated by now what does uh, B do on receiving this particular uh, information from A? 
wherein uh, uh, this message uh, containing uh, A's identity and along with the norms RA. Now, B has to respond back to the message that it has received from A. Now, first thing what it does is it, do it selects a uh, norms RB. And also it performs encryption of the nonce that it received from A which is RA using a common secret which was uh, shared between A and B and sends this entire set of information in message 2 to A. Now what is happening in case of message 3? In case of message 3, A responds back with the nonce RB but still its response that is sent to B is encrypted with the key that is shared between A and B. Now the question that arises over here is A's response to B, uh, B's challenge in the third message appears to be a complete perfect protocol because every information over here is either in terms of encrypted, in, in encrypted form with the secret key that is shared between A and B. But yes, this uh, protocol has some flaws in it. Now let's look at the flaws and try to uh, overcome these flaws. Now what is the flaw that is occurring over here? Let's say A and B are trying to communicate with each other and C is an attacker which has entered the scenario. Now let's try to understand the scenario, uh, attack scenario. In the message 1, C is impersonating itself to be A and sending a message to B saying that it is an it is A and it has selected a nonce, uh, a random nonce RA and sending it to B. Now what does B do? B responds to the challenge that is received from A by encrypting that particular challenge along with a, a secret key which is shared between B and B. Along with that, it also sends its own nonce, which, uh, which is the new challenge sent to A, but it is actually received by C. Now what happens in the third message? The third message over here, we represent it as message 1 dash. Now C attempts to connect to A, claiming it to be B. With Now over here, you can see that C is sending a message to A. And over here it is sending the identity of B along with the nonce RB. Now note that this message is uh, the same message offered to it by B in message 2 as in the previous uh, slides. Now what does A do? A will send back a reply to B but actually it is received by C. Now what does this reply contain? It contains uh, uh, RB that is the nonce uh, which is sent by C to A saying that it is B and then this is encrypted and also it sends a new challenge RC. Now how does C respond to it? C uses the response from A to complete the three way message authentication protocol. Now what does it do? It takes the nonce received from B and encrypts it and sends it to B. Now B is able to verify it uh, and say that, uh, uh, think that B is actually communicating with A but rather B is communicating with C and A is also communicating with C. Now let us look at what, has, what the attacker has achieved. Now C is an attacker and he has successfully impersonated A and B. This third message that was uh, 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 sent by C to B says that it is required to complete the authentication of C to B. Now over here C could not complete the response to B's challenge since it is required to compute the secret key of A and B. So hence C initiated a authentication protocol with A presenting to A the same challenge it received from B. Now, 
A's response to the challenge in uh, the message 2 dash was used by C to convince B that it was A that was trying to actually establish connection with him. Now such an attack is termed as reflection attack be because a, a fragment of message is reflected back uh, for, for, uh, for uh, having the communication successful. Now that fragment is uh, the nonce of B that is RB which is encrypted using the secret key. This fragment was being exchanged between B and C and also A and C. Now this attack is also called as parallel session attack. Now let us try to correct this particular protocol and try to avoid an intruder or uh, impersonating itself as a genuine communicating party between A and B. Now this corrected protocol works mostly on uh, thwarting the reflection attacks. Over here the initiator and the responder have to draw a challenge from disjoint sets. Now what do we mean by drawing challenge from disjoint sets? A will use a nonce, it could be a odd number nonce and B will use a even number nonce. And also both of them uh, try to handle these challenges in a different way. Let us say the responder that is B encrypts his challenge and the, and the receiver that is the initiator decrypts the challenge that it receives. Now over here we can see in the first message A is sending its uh, ID along with the nonce and then in the second message what is happening is uh, using the key that is exchanged between A and B, A, uh, A, B is sending back the nonce in an encrypted form and also a new challenge that is RB in, in, an, in again an encrypted form. Now what does A do? A will perform the decryption in order to send back uh, the nonce which is selected by B. So over here it is performing decryption on the message that is received from B and get back the nonce or the challenge received from B and send it to B. Now this is a protocol which is corrected and it overcomes the uh, reflection attack or the parallel session attack. Now let us look at uh, uh, what happens in asymmetric key based authentication. Over here we assume that uh, there are two communicating parties A and B, both the communicating parties have public private key pairs. Now obviously in uh, asymmetric key cryptography both the communicating parties will have uh, two keys and these keys are related to each other that is why we refer to them as public private key pair. Now over here we will use a notation M and A. The message M sent together with A's signature on M. Now this is what this notation actually means. Now let us see how this um, protocol, uh, how this authentication works. Now again we see this authentication in three ways. One is uh, the flaw that is present in the uh, protocol and then the possible attack uh, and also then we will see how to correct this particular protocol. Now over here in the case of the first message, uh, A is sending its identity along with the challenge that is nonce RA along and also A's certificate. Now what does B do? B receives this uh, information, verifies uh, the certificate of uh, that it received from A and if it is able to validate the certificate that is received, it will send a reply to A. Now what does this reply contain? It contains the string obtained by concatenating RA. Now what, does, what is it doing? It is uh, concatenating um, uh, another new nonce with the one that it has received from A. And then what is it doing? It is signing it with B. And then uh, along with that it is also sending B's certificate. Now the third message after A receives it has to respond back. And how is it responding back to B? Now, a is sending the nonce that is received from B by A by signing it. Now let us see how an attacker is able to deploy 
himself into this scenario. Now A initiates the communication with the first message and this message is actually intended to B. Now what is A saying? A is sending its identity along with the challenge which is called as RA. This is a nonce that is sent from A to B. But this message which is actually coming from A which has to be received or sent to B is in the middle received by an intruder C or an attacker C. This attacker will replay this message which has come from A after some time to B. Now he, re he, he replays the same message to B which contains the identity and a challenge RA. Upon receiving this message, B responds to A's challenge. Now what does B do? It selects a new nonce and appends itself to the previous nonce that it has received from A but actually it is received from C and then it signs this particular message and sends it to A. Now before reaching A, C is capturing that particular message and what it does is after capturing this particular message, it will retain a copy of it and it changes this to some other information. Now what is it doing? The nonce or the challenge it received from B along with the one that it received from A, both of them are signed by C and then sent to A. Now upon receiving, A has to respond to C's challenge thinking it is coming from B. A thus completes the mutual authentication with C by sending the third message. Now what does this third message have? Now it has retrieved the nonce received from B and signed it with itself and signed it with A and sent to B. Now this message halfway is received by C and then C will then forward or replay this message to B. Now what is exactly happening in this situation? Now over here we understand from uh, this particular figure uh, B which, which says that the message 1 is sent by C includes A's identity and attempts to convince B that the message uh, uh, that the message is actually come from A. And what does B do? B will respond to what appears to be as A's intention to communicate with him. And then A may not, may not be actually wishing to communicate with B and is not aware that C is attempting to impersonate itself on her behalf. Yet B receives the message 3 dash over here you can see 3 dash B will receive it from uh, C but actually thinks it is coming from A. He feels A intends to communicate with him since the message 3 dash contains her signature on the norms chosen by him. Now how do we correct this scenario and try to avoid this particular uh, attack on the protocol? Now one solution is that the entities include the identity of the recipient in all the messages. How, how is that done? A is communicating its identity along with the challenge nonce RA. Now what happens in the second message is that B will respond back with its new challenge along with the actual message it received from A. And this entire stuff is signed by B and then sent to A. Now what does this uh, signing refer to? Signing refer to, uh, uh, refers to that uh, B is uh, using its uh, private key in order to perform this signing. And then upon receiving this message, what does uh, A do? A will again respond back to B. And what does it uh, respond back? It will respond back B's identity along with uh, the nonce it received from B and this entire message is signed by 
and that means uh, A uses its private key to sign this particular information and send to B. Now over here since the identities of uh, both uh, communicating parties are involved we are able to avoid the uh, previous flaw in the, uh, flaw in the protocol wherein an attack could be posed. Now, we have come to the end of this particular session wherein we have understood uh, the two uh, one way authentication techniques which is the password based authentication technique and the certificate based authentication technique. Followed by that we have also understood what we mean by mutual authentication technique and within this mutual authentication technique we have seen uh, uh, what happens if we use a shared secret uh, based encryption technique and asymmetric key based uh, encryption technique. Now we close this session and uh, if in case uh, you have any doubts or any queries you can respond over this particular email or this particular uh, mobile number. Thank you.